Wednesday evening late on we had six cases of gentlemen all under 40 all with little or no physical health issues before they'd come into the ward all who had signs of respiratory distress this was an outbreak that came out of nowhere and it was a typical Wednesday and we were at work and we received a phone call three young men had been admitted to A&E in the last 12 hours with respiratory symptoms. We started having some conversations with the staff on the wards, we talked to the doctors and we realised that actually these were symptoms of a serious respiratory infection. We tested for influenza because the influenza season was at its peak. We tested for Legionella and pneumococcal. This ward was a male ward, 20 bedded ward, and it has no single rooms. There are, the gentlemen are nursed in four bedded bays. So we knew the spread was there, the potential for spread was there. It, it must be an infection, um, and we knew that potentially that this was going to get even bigger. Their respiratory distress was very acute. They'd gone from feeling well to having temperatures and struggling breathing and that's going blue light ambulances over to a &E. But you were waiting for the next thing to happen. Which ward could be next? Which patient would deteriorate next? Saturday morning, some gut instinct told me to go to work and lo and behold, by lunchtime, the female ward had phoned me. Uh, they had two cases, one of whom was critically ill and was again going in a blue light ambulance over to a &E. We did get our results back on the Saturday afternoon, so at one o'clock we knew we were dealing with influenza A. So anybody who'd had a vaccination wasn't going to catch this. The people who hadn't had it unfortunately were at risk. And this for us, this was where all hell broke loose really. It really started to become challenging. We now had staff phoning in sick with influenza. We had staff's partners with influenza. We knew we'd run a successful campaign and we knew we'd had a high rate, but actually we also had individual ward figures. So we started to look at how many patients and how many staff had been vaccinated on each of these three wards. I suppose not surprisingly, these three wards actually had the lowest rates of vaccination in the organisation. And for example, we're talking about a staff of 32 on one of the wards and only four had had the vaccine. Around this time, the A&E consultant advised us to shut the whole of our unit down. We closed three wards, we, all patients had Tamiflu, all the patients had to be prescribed escorted leave, so our consultant psychiatrist came in to, to prescribe escorted leave for anybody else who was going to deteriorate that night. The thought that if I didn't have a vaccine, that I could then infect a patient who could end up in high dependency, that, that, that's what stays with me. So I really, really can't understand why healthcare staff wouldn't have a flu jab because there is there is really no reason and no excuse not to have a flu jab. A total of 24 people were considered to have had the influenza. This was an outbreak. Outbreaks are quick. They take you unawares. Um, in 10 days, we had to uh, focus the entire trust resource, our staffing resource, on caring for these patients. 